All right, good evening, everyone. I am Scott Sears, the CEO of your cooperative. On behalf of the employees and directors, I welcome you to Member Appreciation Day and annual business meeting. It is a pleasure for me to be here with you this evening. This event is not only a time-honored tradition for your cooperative, but also one that we enjoy. Thank you for spending your evening with us and supporting your cooperative. At this time, I would like to welcome District 1 Director Chris Berkey from Couts to lead us in prayer. Uh, let's uh, seek the Father together, shall we? Heavenly Father, oh, man, our world needs you. We need Jesus. And Lord, we just ask, Lord, that your, your kingdom would come and that your will would be done. Uh, we just thank you that we can gather together here tonight and, and do this kind of thing together and, and uh, be a membership that can help each other and serve each other. We want to thank you for each of the members. We just pray that you would bless them, that you would watch over them, that your favor would be upon them. And Father, we humbly ask, too, that you would just uh, guide the, the, the employees and keep them safe as they serve the members. And just help us as directors and as staff to make wise decisions. And I thank you for everyone that's here this evening. And Lord, for our nation, for those that serve, for each and every person, Father, that is a part of this great world, Lord, we just pray your peace would just come and that your Holy Spirit and your presence would be made known and that people would just turn to your son, Jesus. We just ask this in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Chris. At this time, I would ask that you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please face east. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A seven-member board of directors elected by you governs your cooperative throughout the year. They hold at least one meeting each month to review operations and financials and make plans for the future. At this time, I would like to introduce the Kanky Valley RMC Board of Directors. Please stand when I call your name. District 1, Chris Berkey from Couts. <laughs> District 2, Dean Morton from Valparaiso. <laughs> District 3, Bill Bowling, Secretary Treasurer from La Crosse. <laughs> District 4, Mike Yankoskis, President from Grovertown. <laughs> District 5, Katrina Harper from North Judson. <laughs> Our two at large directors, Russell Goose from Wanata. and David Janey, Vice President from Valparaiso. Our Corporate Counsel is Tim Kersick. And at this time, I will invite Board President Mike Yankoskis to the podium. All right, thanks, Scott. Before we begin, I would like to welcome you all to this year's annual meeting. It has been an honor to serve as your board president again this past year. Our seven member board is dedicated to ensuring that the cooperative operates efficiently and meets the needs of you and the community. Tonight as we come together as neighbors, friends and community members, we can reflect on our achievements and celebrate milestones. Last year we were pleased to have returned 1.7 million in capital credits to members between who were members between 1972 and 1980. 
Giving capital credits is more than just a financial transaction. It shows our commitment to prudent financial spending for your cooperative success and stability. I'm pleased to report also that a re at a recent board of directors meeting, the board voted to return $2.2 million in capital credits to those individuals who were members between 1981 and 1986. This retirement will occur in November of this year. In 2021, we embarked on a fiber loop project to build a reliable connection between the Kankakee Valley RMC headquarters and our substations. This project has allowed internet service providers to use our fiber loop to bring broadband to rural and underserved areas of the community. You'll see these folks attaching to our fiber all around our service area. Last month, we initiated the use of the fiber loop for our business needs by connecting our first two substations. Through this connection, we are now transmitting data from substation to our headquarters using our high-speed fiber network. As part of our commitment to providing quality service, our employees strive to enhance outage responsive time and overall system reliability. This includes regular maintenance, upgrading our infrastructure, and utilizing advanced technologies to prevent and manage outages. I am proud of the work of the co-op employees and their commitment to excellence ensures that their focus remains on serving you, the members, with safety, reliability, and care. Our board not only directs the co-op's operations, but also works along state and federal regulators, legislators, to support the needs of rural communities. We support the value of the cooperative ownership to ensure our, incurred, our concerns are heard and understood by those in the legislative bodies. I hope you had a chance to stop by the grassroots advocacy booth right outside the door here and commit to being an advocate for your co-op. By doing so, you'll be kept informed on critical legislative issues and play a key role in making sure the cooperative voice is heard. We can't just depend on a handful of folks that we send down to the State House or send to Washington, D.C. Those folks love to hear from local people with their own concerns. And if you're knowledgeable about what is best for our communities and our co-op, your voice is very, very important. I want to extend a thank you to the local legislators for their support. <coughs> Excuse me. We are to have this evening Representative Michael Aylesworks from Hebron. I think he was here earlier. Um, I would like to ask any other county or township officials to please stand because you are connected to the closest route of the people that are here. Are there any of those folks here? Commissioners, council members, township advisory board, township trustees? They went home. <laughs> they have the work to do. All right. Their tireless efforts in advocating for Indiana Hoosiers and their dedication to understanding and addressing the needs of our communities have been truly commendable. In closing, thank you, co-op members, for your continued trust and the dedicated board of directors and co-op employees for their hard work and dedication. Together, we are building a brighter future for the community and are excited about the opportunities ahead. While politics can seem overwhelming, your electric cooperative has dedicated advocates at Indiana Electric Cooperatives. Their team advocates for all Indiana cooperatives, educating and providing resources to elected officials at the State House. We are excited this evening to welcome John Cassidy, the CEO of Indiana Electric Cooperatives, who will share his insights and updates with us tonight. Please welcome John Cassidy. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much, Mike. Um, it's a really nice introduction, uh, and appreciate, Mike, your leadership on Indiana's Electric Cooperative Board. I'd also like to thank the full board of Kankakee Valley REMC 
as well as your CEO, Scott Sears, for having me come out tonight. Really enjoyed being here with you this evening. As CEO of IEC, I have the great privilege of serving Kankakee Valley REMC and the other 37 member cooperatives that are owned and controlled by members like you throughout the state. Collectively, we serve and represent the interests of 1.3 million Hoosiers across the state. The team at IEC is dedicated to meeting the needs of our members and the community served by them. We do this consistent with our mission. Our mission is to unify, lead, serve, and advocate on behalf of our membership. We carry out our mission across a variety of platforms. For example, IEC supports the professional development needs of our members, both, both in terms of the prof professional development of employees as well as education and development of the elected boards of directors. And we do that through a variety of trainings and course offerings, some of which we offer at our uh, facility in Carmel, Indiana, but we also do that by traveling throughout the state and doing trainings and courses to your door. IC has a team of professionals that promote and facilitate a culture of safety and regulatory compliance to ensure that electric cooperatives have the skills and training needed to run the co-op safely, efficiently, and in full compliance with what is very much a complicated regulatory environment. We support electric cooperative efforts to engage their membership, members like you, uh, including youth engagement. And a good example of that is our partnering with KVRMC to provide rewarding and enriching activities for KVRMC's junior board, which we very much enjoy. I was very excited to see that you had uh, you have local elected officials here at your, your member appreciation uh, dinner and event, and the fact that you are placing such an importance on grassroots engagement with the IEC booth. Thank you for that. Um, you know, Mike put it, put it great. Um, we do need your, your eyes, your ears on the issues that impact you and your voice to be brought to the process. If you had an opportunity to fill out one of these cards, uh, get them to someone and we'll make sure that, you at, we're, that you're added to our database so that we can keep you informed on issues that impact your electric bill. This is so significant because it's, it's, it, it's helpful to our efforts to bring that strong, unified, and uh, single voice to the process both at the State House in Indianapolis as well as our voice on Capitol Hill working with cooperatives from across the nation. The electric cooperative movement can be traced back to our beginnings of the 1930s when cooperative leaders came together throughout the state and here, right here in Northwest Indiana to bring about a better quality of life. Electric cooperatives were born of the political process and throughout our history, electric cooperative leaders have played an active role in the policy debates with a litany of issues and policies that affect electric reliability and affordability. So we all have a duty in this room to continue the co-op tradition of political engagement. We have a reputation as an industry through our members of punching above our political weight. And that's both at the State House as well as at our nation's capital. And that strength comes from the collective voices of everyone in this room and every uh, member consumer throughout the state and throughout the country. So we just want to thank you for lending your voice to the issues that impact you. So everything we do at Indiana's Electric Cooperatives is geared to our purpose that is to benefit our members and their communities. We like to think that the shared service offerings uh, that we have at IEC and leaning on the unique skill sets of our team that allows us to support the efforts of KVRMC and every co-op throughout the state. I believe that strong co-ops equal strong communities and that's why I'm so excited about IEC's mission. 
am very much excited about the partnership we have with Kankakee Valley REMC. Our members always come first. And as the landscape evolves for electric cooperatives, we will continue to adapt to meet the needs of all our members, including Kankakee Valley REMC, into the future. So with that, I just want to thank you all again for extending this invitation for me to be with you tonight and the, the partnership that we share with all of you. Thank you and, and God bless you. God bless and I'll turn it back to you, Mike. All right, thank you, John. One of the seven cooperative principles is our commitment to community. So investing in our youth is a vital way to make a positive investment in our community. The Junior Board of Directors program brings together bright young leaders and introduces them to the great opportunities in our rural communities. The eight month, month program focuses on leadership, community service, career exploration, and legislation, just to name a few. To talk more about her experience on the board, I would like to welcome President of the Junior Board, Miranda Moser. Good evening, everyone. My name is Miranda Moser, and I have had the honor of serving as the president of the Kankakee Valley REMC Junior Board of Directors this past year. The goal of this program is to get students more involved in the community and become better leaders in the community in which we live. To say that it exceeded these expectations is an understatement. From meeting with local businesses to visiting the State House in Indianapolis, Indianapolis, we have gained experiences like never before. However, the greatest experience I have gained from this was our Capstone Community Service Project. Throughout the eight months of this program, we were each tasked with completing at least one community service hour a month, each being matched with a monetary amount. At the end of the year, we compiled, compiled our money from community service and decided as a board what local businesses we would like to help and donate to. Collectively, we chose the LaPorte County Fairgrounds, LaPorte County Animal Shelter, Community Services of Stark County, the South Central Weekend Backpack Program, Opportunity Enterprises, and the MAC Foundation. On the Community Service Day, we split our time between painting fences at the fairgrounds, helping with animals at the animal shelter, and making a monetary donation to each. The rest of the money was split between the other organizations chosen in which we presented checks to each organization. Not only did this program benefit those that we served, but I think we can all agree that we've been taught lessons about leadership and giving back, and how when we come together for a common cause, we can achieve great things. Finally, I want to give a special thanks to Amanda Steve and Dave Howell on the behalf of the entire junior board for giving us this opportunity that has taught us an numerous amount of valuable lessons that we will each carry with us throughout college, the rest of our careers, and our lives. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miranda. The successful completion of the Junior Board of Directors program awards each student a $1,000 scholarship. At this time, I would invite the members of the Junior Board of Directors to the stage as I call their name. Please hold your applause until the end. First off, <coughs> Colton Barnes. Meredith Isley from Valparaiso High School, and Colton was from South Central. Lane Mock from Knox High School. Miranda Moser from South Central Community School. Chloe Peretti from Tri Township High School. Jade Pryor from Tri Township High School. Zoe Pressel from Tri Township High School. Owen Radke from North Judson San Pierre High School. Savannah Swanson from South Central Community School. And not able to attend this evening is Portland Minnix from Knox Community High School. 
please give these students a deserved round of applause. Okay, at this time I would like to officially call the Kankakee Valley REMC Annual Business Meeting to order. The Secretary Treasurer has informed me that we do have a quorum for this meeting. The official mailing notice was provided to each member by mail or email in the August Indiana Connection magazine. Additionally, the notice was posted on the Carpenter's website. It would now be appropriate to call for a motion from the membership to waive the reading of the official notice of mailing. I hear a motion. I see a motion. A second? second. Okay, we have a second. Thank you. All those in favor of waiving the reading of the notice, say aye. aye. Those opposed, say nay. All right, that will pass. Okay. A motion would now be in order to waive the reading of the 2023 annual meeting minutes. These were printed in the September Indiana Connection magazine. I will now entertain a motion to waive the reading of the minutes. Do I have a motion? I have a motion, a second? A second, all those in favor of waiving the reading of the minutes say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. Okay, that is passed. Okay, are there any corrections to the minutes as printed? Hearing none, may I now have a motion to approve the minutes as were printed and distributed? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Anybody? Thank you. A second? Thank you. All those in favor of approving the minutes of the last annual meeting, say aye. aye. Those opposed, say nay. Okay, those minutes are approved. I want to thank each of you for being here tonight. Tonight is an important night for your co-op as we update you, the co-op owners, about the year's accomplishments, our strategic initiatives, driving growth, and our plans for the future. This event keeps you informed and involved in your co-op's activities. During the last strategic planning sessions, one initiative included improving our communications with you. Your input is critical to the decisions we make at the co-op, and to ensure we meet your needs, the best way to do that is to hear from you. Doing so will have a more meaningful impact on you as a member owner of the co-op. Last year, we held three regional meetings to allow our members to voice their comments and concerns. These meetings were well attended, and the feedback was consistent across all three. Your valuable information directly influenced the initiatives that I would like to share with you tonight, showing that your feedback is not just heard, but shapes the direction of the cooperative. The third most mentioned concern was access to broadband. We recognize that access to reliable and affordable internet service is missing in our rural communities. The Fiber Ring Project, which is nearing completion, was primarily to address the needs of the cooperative. Seeing the need for broadband in the community, we determined that there was a benefit should an internet provider use the fiber loop to advance broadband access to the community. Your cooperative has taken two significant steps to bring this resource to those who need it. First, we have made our fiber available to internet providers to expand their services. Secondly, we have made it much easier for providers to install their fiber on our poles, allowing for the further expansion of their services. 
We have also opened our community room within our office to host consumer meetings. Each step clearly demonstrates our commitment to the community and our desire to be part of the broadband solution. Members are increasingly concerned about system reliability, which was the second most mentioned topic during our meetings. We recognize these concerns, and as Mike mentioned, our co-op has been actively upgrading and installing new equipment in our substations over the past year. While we cannot always prevent outages due to factors beyond our control, we can control our response. When evaluating these investments, we prioritize your benefit and cost effectiveness. Recently, a neighboring utility announced a rate hike driven by its shift to renewable energy as they transition more toward energy from the sun and wind, along with infrastructure upgrades. Renewable energy is not cheap. Knowing that when we invest in your co-op, we are ensuring that it aligns with your needs and makes the best sense now and in for reaching our future goals. Next year, I look forward to sharing how our investments and fiber infrastructure will help create a smart grid that reduces outage times for our members. We have all felt the pinch of rising grocery and gas prices, and while costs continue to climb, we remain committed to being cost conscious and delivering the quality service you expect. When you expressed affordability as a top concern, we listened. Starting in March of 2025, we will transition to a time of use rate structure, moving away from our traditional flat rates. This new system will allow you to save by being mindful when you use energy. With time of use pricing, electricity cost will vary based on usage times. We will have three periods, on-peak, off-peak, and super off-peak. On-peak hours, when demand is highest, Monday to Friday from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock at night, will have higher rates. Off-peak hours, when demand is lower, 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., will offer lower costs. And the super off-peak period, the cheapest option, occurs late at night through early morning, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. So you ask, why this change? Time of use rates empower you, the member, to save on your electric bill. By adjusting when you run appliances, you can take advantage of these lower rates. Tonight, when you registered, you received a timer to help you program your devices for off-peak hours. This is a great option to help ensure you are running devices and appliances at the off-peak times. The implementation will be a five-step process. Starting now, your next bill will show your usage broken down by price periods to help you monitor your habits. In March of 2025, we will introduce the first rate change, followed by further adjustments in June, September, and finally in December. To support you, please visit our website at kvremc.com. Under the My Account tab, you will find resources, videos, and a rate calculator. Kankakee Valley REMC is at its best when its members are actively involved. So even if you could not attend a regional meeting last year, I encourage you to know that our door is always open. If you have questions or concerns, stop by or give us a call. We are happy to visit with you. We know the upcoming months during the time of use transition will bring many new questions. I invite you to connect with us on social media, look at our website, and read the Indiana Connection Magazine for updates and valuable information that we will be sharing. We are here to support you through this transition. Thank you for your continued support. 
At this time, I would like to invite Corporate Counsel Tim Kersick to the podium. One of the greatest ways you can participate as a member of the cooperative is by voting in the election for, of your board of directors. This year, members were able to vote in one of two ways. Prior to the event this evening, we accepted votes online. In-person in voting was also available to members tonight upon arrival at the uh, Porter County Fairgrounds. In June, nomination petitions were received at the co cooperative's principal office in accordance with the bylaws for the following candidates for director. At this time, I would like to introduce your 2024 candidates for directorship. If you are in the audience, when I call your name, please stand. For District 3, Bill Bowling and Chet Hudsley. For District 5, Katrina Harper. No other petitions were received for District 5, so Katrina is running unopposed. And one of our two at-large districts, Dave Janey. Um, again, no other petitions were received for the at-large district, so Dave is running unopposed. Um, so, after uh, tallying all the votes, I'm pleased to announce the results of this year's election. Your newly elected board of directors serving a three-year term are as follows. For District 3, Bill Bowling, who received 667 votes, defeated Chet Hunsley, who received 430 votes. Katrina Harper, for District 5, running unopposed, received 956 votes. And at large, Dave Janey, again, running unopposed, received 962 votes. Congratulations to Bill, Katrina, and Dave on their election, and thank you for your interest in running for director. Thank you, Tim. We are now to the portion of the meeting where we draw for our prizes. So our youngest prizes is Lucas Walma, six weeks young. And our second youngest, Bruin Hall, five weeks. I'm guessing at five weeks and six weeks, they're already asleep. And our two senior REMC members, 97 years young, Rita Stearns from Crown Point. And 96 years young, Lorraine Hevelin, Valparaiso. Now we will draw for the kids' prizes. We'll be giving away three $100 gift cards. And again, if you're present, please raise your hand and we will bring the prize to you. Otherwise, it will be mailed to you. I have Lizzie from Chesterton, Indiana. Lizzie? I have Abigail Dauphin, Valparaiso, age eight. Okay.
And last, Graham, age 10, from Valparaiso. So member consumers who registered this evening were entered in for the prize drawings. There will be 25 prizes given out tonight. First one I'm gonna draw out is gonna be the grand prize winner, but I'm gonna stick it on the podium and you're gonna have to wait for me to announce your name. You gotta have a little bit of suspension and gotta keep you here. That's our grand prize winner. Next, we're going to draw for five $250 bill credits. First one up, Levi and Sierra Mays, North Judson. Mary Lee Riley from Knox. <laughs> Jeffrey Dennis Chesterton. William and Linda Mars Hebron. And Sharon Wilkinson, Crown Point. fifties. Next we're going to pull names for seven one hundred dollar bill credits. Susan Howell, Crown Point. William Potoff, Grovertown. Paul and Mary Johnston, Valparaiso. Shirley and Clark, oh, I'm sorry, Shirley Moore and Clark Lori, Valparaiso. Donald and Mary Frame, Chesterton. Wallace. Beeson, Valparaiso. And our last one, Larry and Vicki Jernis. Next, we're going to pull names for 12 $50 bill credit prizes. William and Shirley Wallen. Patricia Holmes, Valparaiso. Christopher and Cheryl Serafin, Valparaiso. James Van Wienen, Kautz. Roca Farms. Eugene and Kathy Herma, Couts. Jeff Ludovic, Hebron. Lisa Ramsey, Valparaiso. Andrew Onder, Crown Point. Amanda Dick Valparaiso. 
Which one's this? 12? Oh, 11. Gregory and Susan Bekovic, Westville. Natalie Chambers, Knox. Congratulations to everybody. Again, those are bill credits, so we'll get those put on your account. And for our final prize this evening, we have a $2,000 cash prize. And the winning member is John Costello Sr., Couts, Indiana. Congratulations to everyone. I would like to welcome Mike back to the podium to complete the remainder of the business meeting. Okay, this will be easy. Is there any old business? Any new business? I call this meeting adjourned. Thank you and have a safe trip home.